Welcome to my channel once again. It's been a while that I recorded a video. I just want to say sorry to my followers who for some time now haven't heard from me. I was quite busy with a lot of um, academic stuff. So today on this episode, I just want us to look at something important that I think it might help majority of you. Um, first of all, I am your boy, Koku Ousu. I am a grad student at Hong Kong Baptist University pursuing a master's degree in finance with a concentration in FinTech and financial analytics. So for the past one month, I have been receiving a lot of message about how um, people can get into my university. So I just want to use this episode to run you through the process, um, how the application is being done and how you can actually be considered for funding. So allow me to share my screen to take you through the process and then the step-by-step -step way of applying to most of the program here at HKBU and then also how you can position your document in order to be considered for funding. So let's continue, let me share my screen with you. We'll share your screen. Great. All right, so when you open your website, you just have to type in HKBU, right? If you type in HKBU, that is Hong Kong Baptist University. Uh, Hong Kong generally has um, seven powerful public universities. And then all of them offer different program with different opportunities for students. So you can check them out. Um, let me try to probably search for the universities. We have Hong Kong Polytechnic University, and then we have Hong Kong University, and then we have Poly, um, Hong Kong, Chinese University of Hong Kong, and we have Lake Nine. I mean, good universities that you can actually uh, check on them to see whether you meet some of your program's criteria and then whether there is funding attached to them. So universities in Hong Kong, right, in HK, uh, you can see by rankings over here, by rankings, uh, we have City University of Hong Kong, one of the best schools here, and then we have Hong Kong Polytechnic University, we have the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. We have Chinese University of Hong Kong. Uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong. I need to register this site. This is not the appropriate website. So let me check the other website to give you the number of universities over here. Yeah, so we have the University of Hong Kong, Chinese University of Hong Kong, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. The Hong Kong Polytechnic University, City University of Hong Kong, Hong Kong Baptist University, we have the Lake Nine University. I mean, they are all powerful universities with different programs that you can actually check them up. Um, if possibly there's funding attached to the program you want to reach, um, you can give a try to see. And then one more thing in this country um, regarding the scholarship is that if you are coming for a PhD program or an MPhil program, they have a scholarship called a fellowship scheme that is being awarded by the government over here. So for MPhil and a PhD program, it is for all the universities over here, they are all being awarded one particular scholarship, whether you apply to uh, HKBU or whether you apply to University of Hong Kong, whether you apply to Chinese University of Hong Kong, whether you apply to University of um, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, or uh, PolyU, that's a Hong Kong Polytechnic University, or Lake Nine, any of them, you, if it is PhD or MPhil, you will be considered for the fellowship scheme. And it's very, very good. The fellowship scheme is mind blowing, right? I mean, it covers your tuition for four years or three years programs, and it gives you a stipend of um, close to 3,200 US dollars every month. So it's very, very good. The fellowship scheme is very, very good. But aside that, if let's say you want to read, um, master's program in this country in hong kong um is not that famous in hong kong i must be honest with you 
it is not that famous. So if you are looking for an MPhil program, unless probably you want to do a PhD, that is where you can consider uh, MPhil program. Most of the master's programs over here are thought based. They are industry oriented because that is what they believe. So they are usually one year master's program. Yeah. So if you want to read masters, you have to consider some of these programs, right? So I'm using my school as a case over here, Hong Kong Baptist University. If you come to the university website, what, where you need to go is that you go to admissions and you can see programs. Just, just at the admission section, you can see programs. This is undergrad program. So for undergrad students, you can check some of the programs out. It is arranged according to schools, right? So we have arts, faculty of arts, we have school of business, school of Chinese medicine, of course, there are some of the programs that, I mean, they are being taught in Chinese. So you have to also consider, even though um, Hong Kong has um, English as official language, they also have Chinese as the official language. Yeah, they have two official language, Chinese and then English. And then they speak Cantonese too, the indigenous. Yeah, but they have Chinese as, 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 as part of the official language. So you go to postgraduate programs and they have sub degree programs. You have that as the associate degree, those coming for associate or higher diploma programs or other programs. So you go to postgraduate, we have research postgraduate. That is where you can find M-field and then um, PhD program. So when you come here, you could clearly see you have the PhD programs and we have the Hong Kong PhD fellowship scheme. This is the scholarship. This is the one I was talking about, right? So with a PhD, you can read about it with a fellowship scheme. This is the, this is the offer from, for the scholarship scheme. Uh, we have the entrance award of this. All the things you see over here, they are all for the PhD, uh, the, the scholarship, that's the fellowship, the scholarship for the PhD programs, right? So we have entrance award of this, I mean, per awardee, it is part of it. We have the scholarship for outstanding performance. This, we have a stipend of 26,900, approximately 3,450 US dollars. So um, I think uh, I was even wrong with the initial amount that I gave. Yeah, so you can clearly see, this is your stipend. If you come here as, a, as an MPhil student or a PhD student, this is how much you are going to earn every month, yeah. And then um, your research and then also exchange program um, are being catered for, yeah. If you're a PhD student, I mean, they treat you very well. Yeah, even master students, if you are on scholarship, you are being treated very well. It's just that it is not as big or as huge as PhD students. PhD students are being um, treated much, much better than master student, yeah. So you can consider um, PhDs if uh, you're good. I will come your way another time on how you can apply to PhDs students, whether you have a master's or you, ha you have an undergrad um, um, I mean degree. If you have an undergrad degree, you have to be on good in, in good standing before you can, you can be a good contender for your PhD program over here. Yeah. And if you have a master's already, how you can go around it to I will come your way another time and explain it one after the other for you to see how you can apply to your PhD programs. Yeah, I mean, this vlog is gonna be very long, but I take your time and then go through it because it will be really helpful to you if you consider what I'm going to give out. Yeah, so you can go to their PhD programs, yeah. So they have a lot of PhD programs. You can see we have Faculty of Art, we have Faculty of Science, we have School of Business, we have uh, Faculty of Social Science, and we have School of Chinese Medicine, we have Academies of Visual Arts, School of Communication and Films. So these are the PhD program that is being run by my university according to different what, departments, okay? According to each department within the university. And don't forget, all of them are being considered for the fellowship scheme. So if you apply to any of them, once um, you qualify and then you are able uh, to meet all the criteria, at the end of the day, you'll be considered, you'll be, you'll be voted kind of, they, they have a team that, that deals with all those things, right? They will do the application, review everything, and then at the end day, they will vote for you to be considered for the fellowship. So if the school accepts you automatically, the, the, the funding will be awarded to as well. Yes, if the committee accepts your application, accepts your offer, definitely they are going to recommend you for the fellowship and you are going to um, get the fellowship to as well, unless the school don't consider your application. That is where you will find it a bit difficult to, um, to, to be given the, the fellowship scheme. Yeah, so those interested in master's program, let me just go back and show you. Uh, as I said, I am reading a master's program, right? A one year master's program with my university. So you go to third postgraduate programs, right? I am from business background. So definitely I'm interested in business, right? 
So you go to school of business, right? And when you go to school of business, you can see a lot of programs over here. We have doctor of business administration. Yeah. And then we have master of accountancy. We have masters of business administration, a number of them, right? So your job is to just to go through the one you think it is in line with um, what you want to do in future, right? I mean, I want to be a financial risk analyst. So um, my, my option was to go to finance, master's of science in finance, fintech and financial analytics. So that is what I'm reading currently. So let me just open my university website. Yeah. So when you open the website, um, you can see a bit of information about the program, um, how you can apply, and then um, the things that you need to have. So first of all, you need, sorry, first of all, you need um, your CV, right? You need your CV, you need your SOP, um, you need your transcript, and then two recommendations, right? So it is not that difficult. So you read, you can read the information over here to know what, uh, I mean, you need before you can apply to the program. Or you can check it over here, admission requirements, and you can see everything over here. You need a bachelor's degree with harness from a recognized university or comparable institution or a professional qualification deemed to be equivalent, right? You need a satisfactory score on the graduate management admission test. That's GMAT or GRE. That's a graduate record exams. It's encouraged, but it is not mandatory. Yeah. So here, if you think um, you don't have good um, CGPA or you don't see yourself to be a good um, candidate for this program, I would advise you to take the GRE or the GMAT before applying to this program. Yeah. And then the language proficiency, if you are not coming from an English speaking country, you have to take either IE, LTS, or TOEFL. Yeah. Or any other equivalent. Like um, um, I think there's 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 one they can do a lingo or something like that. I, I think they do accept that one too as well. So you can also consider that if you have that one, you can actually um, apply or you can actually also consider that exams too. And then the program is being run on two different sections. We have part-time student and then we have full-time student. Okay. You can apply as a part-time student or you can apply as a full-time student. Okay. But the logic here is that if you are coming as a part-time student, um, definitely it's it's hard to be given a scholarship. Yeah. Unless uh, probably you are a citizen. So part-time students, uh, part-time or uh, reading this program on a part-time basis favors the indigenous more than a, as an international student. So if you're an international student, I would just advise you to consider full-time um, uh, full student uh, 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 as, 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 as your way of applying to the program, right? Just consider the full-time status. Don't go for part-time because that favors the indigenous, right? So one thing I just want to send across is that uh, most people contact me about uh, uh, their challenges that they do usually face when they visit the university website. Um, the uh, website is not that friendly. I wouldn't say, uh, maybe to me it is friendly, but, but in general, it is not that easy to navigate. So you need to take your time to read the information the one after the other before you'll be able to see a lot of um, the information that you are looking for, right? So when you visit the program website like this, what you can do is that don't quickly go to the apply now, right? Um, to know more about the program, just read the information. You go down here about the study curriculum. You can see the program website, okay? That is where all the necessary information are being hidden, right? So you just go to the program website. Quickly go to the program website. And when you go to the program website, you will see all the information over here, right? So you can go down. I mean, all this information, they are important. If you are now applying to the program, I would advise you to read, right? These are the courses within the program that you can do, right? That you will do. You will do a courses related to finance, FinTech, financial analytics, machine learning, financial computing, textual analysis, have cybersecurity and privacy, blockchain, cryptocurrencies, algorithm trading, financial fraud, and the regulatory compliance. So these are the courses within the program. And then in all, the programs goes for, I think, 30 credits. Yeah, it goes for 30 credits. So you are you have to take maximum of 10 courses before they can award you the degree, right? Yeah. So the courses over here, you are not supposed to. Some are mandatory, some are also non-mandatory. In all, you take two optional in addition to the mandatory one in order to fulfill the requirement for graduation. So you go down here. I mean, we are not interested in all this information. But if you are, if you are now, if you're a newbie, right, you just try as much as you can to read all the information from the website because it will give you a lot of insight about the program itself. And that will tell you whether you really want to read the program or you are not ready for it. Yeah. 
So they have um, this accreditation, IAPPP, that's the International Association of Privacy Professionals. After the program, um, you'll be given this for one year, year to practice as, as, as a professional um, um, privacy, as a, pri as a privacy professional. Yeah, that is a recognition. So in Ghana, it is also similar to um, those coming from an accounting background like myself. It is also similar to um, ICE, yeah, that's the Institute of Chartered Accountant, yeah. And then, yeah, in West Africa, yeah, that is cut across West Africa. It's similar to the Institute of Chartered Accountant. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. So you go down and you can see a lot how the program is being taught. You can see all the information are here. And then the lecturers that takes the various courses within the program, you will see all of them. Yeah, so you can see the core courses are here. These are mandatory for the program, right? And then we have elective courses over here. The elective courses, you are supposed to read just two. You are supposed to pick two and add it to this making 10 in order to fulfill the program's requirement. So you go down where we are interested is the scholarship and financial subsidy. That is where, I mean, most of international students, because trust me, even if you are coming from a rich family and then you want to study in Hong Kong without scholarship, it will be very, very difficult because the cost of living in Hong Kong is not that easy. I will come down to give you more uh, back again, to give you more insight about um, how you can manage to successfully live in Hong Kong and then also make a lot of money to you as well. Yeah, because living in Hong Kong wet it. If I tell you it doesn't wet it, then I will just be deceiving you, right? It's really wet it because it's a, it's a developed country that has everything. Yeah, so your job is to just to take advantage of the system and to educate yourself, to enrich yourself, to develop yourself, to be a better person in a society. That is what you need from the country. Yeah, so when you come here, you, there, there's a lot, they have a lot of scholarships for the program. They have international postgraduate scholarship. They have entrance scholarship. They have diversity scholarship. They have IAPP um, scholarship that's a Western scholar. And then we have um, other scholarships that you might be interested, right? But I think in, with all these scholarships, the one that is very lucrative is the international postgraduate scholarship. So if you're applying to this program, that should be your goal. That should be your goal. You have to target that, right? So you go to international postgraduate scholarship. That's the IPS, right? And then the IPS gives you a full tuition waiver plus a living subsidy, a living subsidy of uh, um, 10,000 Hong Kong dollars. Yeah, 10,000 Hong Kong dollars. A living subsidy of 10,000 Hong Kong dollars. So if you want to know a bit of information about it, you can you can you can see it over here. Yeah, you can see it over here. It gives you a full tuition waiver plus 100,000 Hong Kong dollars living allowance, and that is that is approximately 12,820 US dollars. Right, it is being spread across the months of the program. So if you come as a full-time basis, the program is always, it's, it's one year, but you only have one, uh, 10 months to complete the program. So the scholarship is being spread across the 10 months duration of the program. Yeah, so in every month you'll be receiving 10,000 Hong Kong dollars. It depends on the program. And then when you, op when you go to the IPS website, uh, you can see the various programs that are being considered for this scholarship, right? And you can see Master of Accountancy. So if you want to come and read Master of Accountancy, you are being considered for the IPS. Master of Human Resource Management, you are being considered. Applied Accounting and Finance, Master of Applied Economics, apply, uh, Master, Master of Science in Business Management, Corporate Governance and Compliances, Master of Science in Data Analytics and Business Economics, Entrepreneurship and Global Marketing, Finance, FinTech, and then we have Marketing for Creative or Economy. So these are all the... And then the good thing is that this scholarship is automatic, right? If you apply to the program, it is automatic. You'll be considered for the scholarship automatically, right? It doesn't have different criteria from, from the uh, application process. You, you will be considered for it automatically. Yeah. So let me just go after explaining this, let me just go back to the program itself, how you can apply to the program. Yeah. So after reading this and you think um, you are okay, you've, you've considered the requirement and you think you meet the requirement, now the next thing is uh, to begin the application process. So your job is to just go to the apply now, right? You just have to go to the apply now. So to apply now, your job, first of all, you need to sign up. You just have to sign up um, with system information you apply. Don't forget, it's a taught prog postgraduate program. If it is research if, or that is MPhil or PhD, you just have to go for this one. So taught postgraduate program, and then you enter um, maybe your username six to 10 characters. So let's say my username is, um, let's say Kweku, right? My username is Kweku23 um, because uh, I need six to um, 10 characters before it will pick. And then let's say my password, let me just enter any password that is um, kind of okay, right? So let me just enter any password that I think 
uh, it is okay. Yeah, then you just retype your password, right? You just retype it. Um, you just retype your password. And the next thing is email, right? So let me just say this is my email. So they will send you a verification. Yeah, are you sure that you have already read the information posted on the general information page? You just click yes. Yeah, so uh, I won't say my, so now they, they will send you an email, right? For you to verify. So you just have to go to your email to just verify it, to just verify uh, the, the, the process before you can continue. Yeah, so you verify, so you can see it over here, GS. So when you click on it, definitely there'll be a link inside for you to do the verification. Thank you for your interest in our postgraduate program. To complete the uh, process, please click on the link at the bottom, yeah, of this email to activate. So the link at the bottom of this email to activate, this is the link. So you just click here to activate. Yeah, you are being redirected. So you go to sign in now. So your email is now activated. So you go to thought, and then uh, it was Kwaku23, right? And then the password, uh, you just enter your password, right? You just enter your password and then you go to submit. So it will open like this for you. So when you open it like this, you just go to programs. Okay, you just have to go to programs. Programs applied for, and it will open like this for you. Programs applied for, then you just have to choose the program. It is an MSc, so you just type MSc. And then you just look through, maybe you want to apply to uh, data analysis and business economics as full-time, you just enter it like this, full-time. Then you go to save, right? Anytime you try to move to the next stage, they will just give you a pop-up notification whether you really know what you're doing, right? You just, your job is just to click yes if, if that is what you want to do, right? Then after doing this, you can see up here, that is the thing that you're supposed to do, right? After selecting the program, you can see here, you go to personal particulars. So personal particulars, you open it, just enter your surname. Let's say my surname is KK. Uh, okay, let's say your surname is, um, let's say, um, Frimpong. You just type in Frimpong, right? You just type in Frimpong. And then uh, maybe then a family name, if you have any family name in Chinese, this one is for Chinese. You know, the school is in Asia, so definitely they will consider that. So other name, if you don't have any name in Chinese, you just have to leave it, right? But if you're coming from Asia, like China, you have to put your name in Chinese over there. Yeah. So if you're not from Asia and you're an international student, you just have to go to the other names as well. So let's say your other name is Frimpong. So let's say Kwame, right? You are Kwame Frimpong. You just put it there. Yeah, Kwame Frimpong. Then HKID. If you don't have any HKID, you just have to leave it, right? Because HKID number, you don't have it. So you just have to leave it. Maybe your sex, you are male, yeah. Maybe country of birth, so you can just choose. Maybe you're from Ghana, right? You just put in Ghana, right? The date of birth, you can put anything over there. Maybe fourth, uh, maybe fourth April, uh, nineteen, maybe nineteen, nineteen ninety-two. Yeah, you can put it in nineteen ninety-two. Are you a local student? You just click no. You are not a local student. Yes. If you are not a local student, please state your country of origin. You just these are busy, busy questions, right? These are busy, busy questions. You just go to. Yeah, passport. So correspondence address, you just have to put in your residential address. So you can just uh, enter any of your residential address. I mean, you can just enter maybe house number, like what I have over here, maybe house number, uh, house number maybe uh, 10, right? Maybe house number 10, um, Accra. You can just put it there, like, you can just put it there, house number 10, Accra. You just put it there, your telephone number, maybe you can just enter 02, uh, 0245 one nine just enter it yeah that's your mobile number do you then they have asked you do you do you have um a qq that's it's it's a social media app right or skype or WeChat. if no you just click no i mean you don't stress a disability you don't have any disability and your job first of all you save and then um you can go to nest right you save and then you go to nest so you do it like that institution yes this are required for academic qualification so you just have to enter your academic qualification. When you're done, you go to next, right? Institution, that's if you have any professional qualification, those um, with ICA, you can, you can enter it here. It's very, very advisable to do that, right? Um, and then if you want, if you have other qualifications like ACCA, you can also put it there. SEMA, you can put it there. Um, if you are coming from different background with different uh, professional qualification, it is advisable to state it, yeah. Then when you are done, you go to next. And then here, test results, you don't have any test results because 
maybe you have a good credential that you think it will warrant with the test results. So you can just skip it and then go to next. And then your job, I mean, required field language proficiency. Here, language proficiency, if you are coming from um, Ghana, you just have to go to, and if you don't have any test results, because you are coming from an English speaking country, uh, whether Ghana, Nigeria, wh wherever you're coming from, if it's an English speaking country, your job is to just go to choose English as a medium of instruction, right? Mean English as a medium of instruction. And then the examining body, the examining body, your job is to, um, the examining body, your job is to uh, put uh, maybe your school, you can put your school over there. So if you don't see your school over there, the examining body, uh, let me see, you don't see your school over there, then you can also put English as a medium of instruction, right? Data order. No, at the examining body, you have to put your school over there. Sorry. So if you want to put your school over there, you can go to, you can see this side. Yeah, just this. Then you change it to type. When you click on it, they will allow you to type. So you can, you can clean this. They will allow you to type. You just clear this. Yeah, you just clear this. And then let's say you have, you completed my school, University of Cape Coast. You can just type it there, University of, um, University of Cape Coast. Yeah, you can just type it there, University of Cape Coast, right? You can just type the University of Cape Coast. Yeah, University of Cape Coast. Yeah. Then month, that is the day. The month is the day that you completed um, your undergrad study. So I completed in um, 2020. So you just put it there, July 2020, right? July 2020. And a grade score. The grade score is always what? Excellent, right? The grade score is always excellent. So you just put it there, excellent, right? Then you go to next. That's all. Just put excellent. Here, GMAT, you don't have any GMAT. You just skip it, right? Then you come here, work experiences, you just list them one after the other. Maybe you work just like me, I did my service with, um, with my university, University of Cape Coast, work position, you can put it there, whether you're a teaching assistant, whether you're office assistant, whether you're accountant assistant, whatever position, you just put it there, right? And then you go to work mode, is it full-time or part-time? You just indicate it, right? And then the, the month, that's the period, maybe from July, 2020 to maybe September, or probably um, uh, maybe September, 2020 to July, whichever day that you started and whichever day that you ended, right? And if you are a current, if you are a current employee, your job is to state as at now, the dates that, uh, as, at, as at today, yes, you just have to indicate as at today. So maybe from the day that you started your job and then to today, then you just put it there, right? That's okay, that is acceptable. Then you go to next, and then next one is important notes of um, um, submission of confidential reference. So here, if um, this school allows you to either submit a hard copy recommendations or probably online mode, and I would advise all of you to use the online mode because the school respected that, they respect that one more than the hard copy one because they believe that one, you don't know what the lecturer is actually writing about you. Yeah, you don't know the information the lecturer is providing and they believe that is more legit compared to the hard copy one. So you just have to indicate the lecturer's um, details over here. So if he's a professor, you just indicate professor, you write his name, the organization, University of Cape Coast position, the senior lecturer, maybe HOD and the senior lecturer, you just indicate it, maybe dean and then the senior lecturer, you just indicate it, whatever position that he, he or she holds, you just have to indicate it there, yeah. Then when you are done, you move to next, right? So here is additional information. Yeah, this is where a lot of people reach out to me. Yeah, this part, uh, people think that is your SOP, but that is not your SOP, right? This is about additional information. Any other information that you are not able to provide during the application process, whether in your SOP, um, whether on your CV or whatever, that you couldn't add it. That is where you have to indicate it. Maybe it can be what you're doing currently, right? Maybe currently you're writing particular exams or currently you're embarking on certain projects. You can indicate it over here for them to know uh, who you are. Yes, that explains who you are. So if you are writing, probably if you are from my university, if you are an accounting student and you are now taking your professional qualification exams, you can just indicate it. Um, you are currently writing your professional exam that will give you an edge in the market, whatever. whatever. Whatever information you just want to be, just make sure you construct something nicely and then neatly for them to know that, yeah, this, that is you. Then you go to next. Then you go to next. When you are done, this is where uh, you, this is the final part. That is the supporting documents part, right? So if you go to, if you go to next, it will come here. Your job is just to go to the upload. You see guidelines over here. The guidelines will explain how you are supposed to put your documents together, right? So you come here, you see upload. Because during the application process, I, I did not indicate a lot of things like my job experiences and other things. There's nothing here for me to upload, right? Because I didn't do that. But when you are doing the process, definitely you're going to put your experiences over there 
your education and everything. And they will all appear here. And your job is to just click on the upload and then you upload the document over here. So if you indicate your institution during the application process, you will see your university over here. And your job is to upload, add, just, just combine your certificate and your transcript as one document and upload it there. And then if you indicate job experiences, right? Your job is to attach, um, uh, is to attach the document, okay? Is to attach the document to attest that indeed you're working. So if you are now doing your national service, right, with a particular department, you can upload your national service um, letter, the offer letter there. If you have a full-time employment, you can upload your letter over there as an evidence to support um, um, your, your experience, right? But in a situation where you have about three or four working experiences, right, if it is hard for you to do that, I would just advise you to leave at least one one working experiences and upload your CV there. Yeah, just upload your CV over there. If you don't have all the supporting document for your work experience, I know a lot, there are a lot of, um, in Ghana, they say there are a lot of I mean, unofficial work that we, we do. Yeah, they are not formal work that we engage ourselves um, in. So we tend not to have official document to actually uh, backtrace whatever claim that we try to make. So it's sometimes hard to, to come by this official document. So what you do is that you can upload your CV in place of them. I just want to sign this question up, uh, across. Please and please again, don't leave your CV out. Even if you have all the supporting document, all the evidence to support your job or your work experiences, please leave one option and upload your CV there. It's very, very important, okay? And then your personal statement too, um, if you have a hard copy recommendations, um, your job is that you just have to add your personal statement to your hard copy recommendations and upload it at that part. Yeah, when you go to the upload section, assuming I indicated everything in the process, I will just see all of them over here and you just have to upload it. Yeah, you just upload it there. Yeah, and that will be okay for you. So when you are done, when you are done, then you can go back to home, right? When you are done, you can go back to home. When you are done with the uploading and everything, you can go back to home. So when you go back to home, you can see the required document. You can see all of them here appearing here, right? All of them, they are all appearing over here. And the one with the asterisk are the, the, required, um, the required field that you need to fulfill, that you need to fulfill the academic um, qualifications. Yeah, you need to fulfill that, yeah. And then we have the um, professional qualification. Yeah, the professional qualification, I just want to send this one to our course. Assuming during the process, you indicate that you are writing a professional qualification, you will need evidence to backtrace that. So what you can do is that you can go for the official admission letter from your professional body. Usually you can visit your portal to print it out. Or if you have taken some of the exams, you can back it with your transcript. You can request your transcript from the institution and then you just back it with it. Yes, that is enough evidence to convince them, yeah. So when you are done, your job is to submit. Just submit the form. Yeah, just submit the form. And these are just um, normal thing, the online payments. Yeah, online payment, whichever mode you want to use. Either you want to use Jetco. Yeah, the Jetco is um, the Visa, uh, MasterCard, or whatever mode here, yeah, whether TT, Telegraphic Transfer, or whatever that you want to use. The union pay is for the local people over here. Hong Kong people use the union pay. I don't think they have some in Africa. Um, the wallet to Hong Kong and the mainland people are able to use, and some of the Asia countries are able to use that. Yeah, but the Jetco is the universal one, right? That is the visa. And then you just have to, this is just a common kind of a survey where you heard from the university, and you just have to, I mean, ask, take any of them, right? Whether postal or postgraduate prospectors or whatever. You just have to take any of them. Then you go to, I mean, submit. And then you just go, okay. And the next one is just, uh, I think I'm missing something, right? Please complete the section academic qualification. Yeah, because I couldn't um, add a supporting document to it, they will not allow me to proceed. So at this point, you are at the point to submit your application. You just have to submit it. And then when you submit your application, you wait um, for a feedback. Yeah, immediately you submit, you are going to get a feedback from the university, right? You're going to get a feedback from the university and then they will do an initial screening. The initial screening is to select the best candidates out from, I mean, the whole, uh, the whole people that have applied for the program, yeah. And then when you're being shortlisted, they will send you an email for, um, for an interview. That's an invitation for an interview. And then the interview 
I will come back again to explain what and what you need to prepare for the interview. So this is um, the general process about the, the school application. So I will come back once again to explain what you need to have um, for the interview. Thank you for having time for me. If you are new to my channel, I would encourage you to subscribe for me. And if you are here with me, I just want to show my appreciation to you for being very supportive to this channel. God bless you. Continue watching my vlogs. Keep on sharing and comment. Please, if you want me to do vlogs on other parts, do comment in the comment section below so that I will know what you guys want and I will be able to provide the information that you need. Thank you very much. See you on my next vlog. Bye for now.